In this video, I do some modifications to a shop press. I put a winch on it to raise and lower the table. I also rebuild the piece that the jack goes on and put an air over hydraulic jack on it. Hey, so when I first got this press, I added these pieces on it uh, to make it stronger. And I also add, welded these two bolts on here where I can put the handle here. And I welded a, a little piece of square tube on here as a handle. But one of the biggest problems with these presses is to raise and lower the table. You have to take everything off of here, the press plates, and you pick one side up, put the pin in there, then pick the other side up, and it's just a pain. So what I want to do is put a winch on here where I can raise and lower it easy and leave the press plates and everything on there when I raise and lower it. And I also want to put an air over a hydraulic jack on here. That'll make it much faster. Yeah, and there's several different ways people put winches on these. Sometimes somebody will mount the winch to one side of the table and they'll have pulleys up on top. The cable going down to the other side. But by doing that, the winch goes up and down with the table. I don't want to do that. I've also seen one person where they ran a cable down on one side and went through the bottom on two pulleys. And then it went up all the way to the top with a pulley and then it came back down to the table. And by doing that, that makes it so the winch only has to hook to one side of the table and it lifts the whole thing. But how I'm going to do is put two cables on the winch. I think that's the easiest way to do this. Yeah, what I got is one of these cheap Harbor Freight uh, cable winches with a crank on it. And I'm going to rework that and make that work for this. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is rework this arm where it sticks out much farther and it's shorter because I, I don't need to pick up very much weight here. And then I can mount it in the middle of here. And by doing it this way, I only need a one pulley over here on this side. So this is going to mount up here like this. And this is after I, I reworked the crank handle here. Yeah, then the cable will just run down on one side to this piece. Yeah, then only one pulley will have to be put up over here to make it go to the other side. Yeah, what I'm going to do is weld two pieces of uh, two inch angle iron in there to mount that uh, winch on there. And I just got one clamped in there right now. Yeah, I got those two pieces welded across there and the holes drilled in it to mount that. And another piece is going to have to be welded across this other side for the pulley to mount on to. Yeah, and how am I actually going to mount this piece on there is I'm going to make a bracket that's going to come up on the back side. Because this needs to mount like in the upside down position. That way if the cable gets too much slack in it, it can't come off the roller. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is take this and stick this in the lathe and take this weld off here. And then I made this piece, and I'll put this in the center to separate the two cables. But I'll true this up in the lathe because it's not perfectly round, and i got to make this hole a little tiny bit bigger because it's a metric uh, size here, and I only had a, a 7 8 annular cutter, and it's a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, and also with this table, it doesn't have to go up and down exactly straight because all you have to do is make it go up above those two bottom pins and stick them in there and then lower down. Yeah, I put this piece in an expanding mandrel and put it in the lathe and turned the outside and then I made the inside the diameter the right diameter too. All I need to do now is drill a hole right where that black dot is, like maybe about a quarter inch. The cable's 3 16 because it's going to run, it clamps down on the other side so it has to be able to run through this and to this side also. Now I'm going to cut the weld off of it and the lathe on the other piece and I'll re-weld it on the outside. Yeah, I got that little hole drilled there. Yeah, I was able to get this piece off. I stuck it in the lathe and machined that weld off and got it apart. 
this was originally welded on the inside, but there's like a half an inch sticking out here, so it can be welded on the outside, which would make this much easier. And here's what it looks like with that piece on that's going to separate the two cables. Yeah, I got it welded back together. Now I'm going to try to fish this cable through here. I'm, I'm going to make it so it's just one cable and it's clamped right in the, about in the center. It's going to be 28 inches longer on one side because the cable runs across the top. So this side I'm attaching a cable just with one of these things. And then the other side I'm going to, I'm going to make it adjustable, but I'm going to clamp it together and run it up and down a bunch of times to get the slack out of the cable before I actually figure out where I want to put it. Yeah, I ended up having to put a piece of angle iron in here and putting a pulley here because it was rubbing right, right up on the top. And I just welded that little bracket on there and this will be adjustable. And it's best if you make this where there's not too much cable on here, then it tracks it better. Yeah, so how I'm going to do uh, do this is I'm going to put uh, this on here loose without cramping it. And I'll put this on here temporary. And then I'll run the table up and down a bunch of times and get it where I want it. Then I'll crimp this piece. The best way to put these cables on here for the first time would be to have two people pulling on each end as you wind it on there. Then each coil would be tight on there. But I, I can't do that by myself. But it seems like it's getting to where it's pretty tight right now. And this press, normally I use it in the top hole or one hole down, so I'm not moving this table very much each time. Yeah, I took and uh, TIG welded this together since it's stainless steel. Yeah, I got it on there. Even with me standing on it, it goes up and down pretty easy. Yeah, so next I'm going to fix this where it's all bent in here. And I'm going to put an air over hydraulic jack on here. Yeah, here's where this piece out. And look at how badly bent this is. Something must have got in there crooked and caused that. It's even cracked down here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll straighten this out. And then I'll weld a piece of quarter inch plate to the top. And in here, I'll cut this piece out of here, and I'll weld a piece of quarter inch plate in here instead of this, this is just like eighth inch thick. But it shouldn't bend as easy. So the first thing I have to do to straighten in this is cut this piece out right here, and then I can heat it up and hit that with a hammer and straighten it. Yeah, so I got that piece out of there now. Now you can see where it's all bent. That should be easy to straighten. Yeah, it's straightened pretty easy. Now I gotta make the piece of quarter inch plate that's gonna go on the top and the piece that's gonna go on under the bottom. I just made sure it's still gonna fit on here. That it didn't get warped or anything like that. Yeah, and here's the piece I'm going to weld on here for the jack to go on. And I drilled a hole in the center so I can clamp this together and weld it in the center too so that everything stays tight where that pin is. And there's no movement in between the two pieces. Yeah, so I just got this piece all welded in there. Yeah, this should make it a lot stronger. Now I just got to do the one underneath. Yeah, I got that piece all welded in there, and I really reinforced this, so there's no way it's going to bend again. Yeah, I also took and welded pieces in here to tighten that gap up. Yeah, and this is what the finished piece looks like. As soon as the paint dries, I'll put it back on.
Yeah, and on these jacks on a, a shop press or an engine hoist, it's so much easier to use it if you put a knob on here. And I got this knob from a Swag Op Rod. And it's best if you do that before you put the jack on there. Then you can tip it up and unscrew this out of here so it won't wake any uh, float out. And I also took this piece off of this handle here because you're never going to lock that down when you're using it on, on this application. Yeah, and this is the one I did on my engine hoist. I took this jack, I unscrewed that piece out of there, knocked the roll pin out, and I took the original one, cut it off, stuck it in the lathe, drilled into it, and put the two together, then TIG welded it, and it, that makes it a lot easier to use this. Yeah, what I had to do was take a much longer roll pin, grind it at an angle on the end to get it started, and then it, it pushes through there real hard, and then I cut it off the right length. One thing Swag Off-Road should have done is made this handle bigger. It's a little bit small. Yeah, and here's the old jack. I weld a little piece of a square tube to it, and it's much easier to use that being that size. Yeah, so what I want to do now is replace this whole piece with a jack on it. It's not, though the jack sits on, it's not in very good shape. So I got this piece of six inch uh, channel from a place called Metal Depot online. And this is real heavy duty stuff. It's 400 and something thousandths thick. And I already made these pieces out of two inch by three inch uh, rectangular tube that's quarter inch thick. And I'm just gonna weld these to the ends. And I made this piece in a lathe uh, and I'll, I'll cut it to whatever length I need it and weld that on. Yeah, so I got this tack welded together. Now I'm going to finish welding this real good. Yeah, so now I have it all welded. So the next step is to drill those two holes for the springs. And then I'm going to cut these two pieces of pipe off and I'll weld them on too. And this piece I made much bigger than the original one uh, in a lathe, and I'll cut it off however long I need it and weld that on. Yeah, I got the two holes drilled in here. And this piece mounts on, gets welded on there in the center, and a piece of quarter inch plate goes around it, like the original one, with a hole drilled in it. Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is cut this off at the right length, and then I'll stick this end in the lathe and machine it to where it's perfectly flat. So it looks like I'm going to take about an inch off of this. Yeah, so I got this piece welded in there. Now I need to take this quarter inch plate and make the other pieces that are in here like this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, and I got this piece cut out that's going to go in here, and I just used a hole saw to make the hole. And it's going to get welded in there like that. And that makes this piece actually stronger. Yeah, I just tack welded this piece in here. I'm also going to put pieces in here, down underneath it. And this makes this really strong. Yeah, and this is the original piece that I cut off, the original uh, one. Look at how it's all bent. But it just got destroyed because it wasn't strong enough. Yeah, so I got the pieces all tacked in here now. And I sprayed this with cooking spray so it keep the splatter down. Now I'm going to finish welding this. Yeah, so now I got this piece fully welded in here. Yeah, this should be real strong now. Yeah, so now I'm going to take and cut these two pieces off and weld them onto the new one. It probably doesn't even need that. And I just set the new one in here. Yeah, we got about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around the way I wanted it between these pieces. Yeah, and to cut these pieces of pipe off, I used this cut off tool. It worked real easy. Then I put some shims in here to get it perfectly in the center before I started to weld these on. 
Yeah, so now I just need to wipe this off and then paint it. Then I can put the jack in there. Yeah, I got it all painted. As soon as the paint dries, then I can put the, the jack in there. Then it's finished. Yeah, this is going to be a lot better than it was before. Yeah, now I got the jack in there. And it doesn't matter if it hangs off a little bit in the back. Because all the pressure is going to be right on the center here. Because the base on these jacks are much bigger. These air over hydraulic jacks. Yeah, and with all four springs on here, it goes up real fast. Yeah, I just got it moved back into the other garage. Boy, this thing is heavy. It wasn't quite as heavy before I started.